In this episode of Hardcore Minecraft, I am going to build the ultimate hidden base that contains everything you could ever need, from a villager trading and potion brewing area to a secret vault filled with goodies. In the last episode, I got a bunch of villagers on the island, and well, they're living in a dirt box. So I think it's time to build them a new home. But not only that, I need to build a place to display my diamonds, a place to store a beacon, a place for all of my valuables, a place for brewing potions. So to solve all of these problems, I'm going to build the ultimate secret hidden redstone base. Now guys, we all know that I'm a pro Minecrafter, but I have a confession to make. I can't do redstone. I know. I, I know, I'm so, I, okay, look, I'm sorry. Now, although I'm not the best with redstone, the one thing that I do know is that if we are going to make a secret hidden door, we need slime balls for sticky pistons. And as you can see, we have no slime balls. So let's go and find a swamp. Aha, here we go. Why does slime sound so satisfying? So to make this hidden door, we need some redstone, some pistons that we can turn into sticky pistons, a slime block, some obsidian, two redstone repeaters, and some of this wood so we can make some buttons. Now that I have everything prepared, I need to first decide where I want to put the hidden door. It could be really cool if we build the secret door inside of our house, but I'm thinking it will be way cooler if we camouflage this thing right out the front of our house. So let's build this thing. Okay, this has taken way longer than it should have. So let's test it out. Three, two, one, and... Why isn't it working? Okay, so I've changed some stuff in the redstone and it should work. Please work. Oh, yes, it, ac it actually worked. Now the question is, if I press this button, will it send us back up to the top? Let's try it out. And boom. Oh, yes. Oh, and if you guys think that this secret door is cool, trust me, this is nothing compared to the doors that we're going to be building later. So now that we have the first secret door set up, we need to mine a giant area to actually fit the secret base itself. But the thing is, I want this secret base to be giant. And well, mining like this is going to take us absolutely ages. But if we get ourselves a beacon, we'll be able to mine out the area super, super quickly. So let's head to the nether fortress so we can get ourselves some wither skeleton skulls. And then with the wither skeleton skulls, we can summon the wither, hopefully defeat it, and get ourselves a beacon. Okay, we have made it to the fortress. Now all we have to do is try and find some wither skeletons. Okay, we have our looting three sword. Let's see if we can try and get a wither skeleton skull. And okay, no luck. Okay, what about you? Please drop us one. And okay, this, this may take a while. There we go. We have our first one. There's two. And there's three. Let's go. We have all three. And surprisingly, that was really, really quick. Now it's time to head home and fight the wither, which I'm really, really scared to do. All right, so let's do this. I have the wither skeleton skulls. I have the soul sand. I have a trusty enchanted golden apple if anything's to go wrong. So let's go down here and let's find a good spot to fight this thing. All right, this area is looking pretty good. So let's just my... Anyway, though, so what I'm going to do is just mine out an area like this where we are going to spawn the wither. And then from here, we just need to mine a straight line so that we have somewhere to run. Okay, now it is time. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, we just have to wait for it to charge up. And then we are just going to go ahead and fire tons of bow shots. Here we go. Okay, let's go. Let's just keep on firing bow shots. Oh, that is doing chunks of damage as well. This is actually going to be quite easy, I hope. Okay, let's try and do this without getting hit once. Okay, and we now have it at half health, which means we need to go in with our sword. Come on, this is actually really easy. What? And any minute now, there we go go. It turns out that was way easier than I was expecting and we didn't even need all of this space. So now that we have our nether star, we can go ahead and finally make ourselves a beacon. And then let's grab all of our diamond blocks and head down to our secret base. And now finally, all we have to do is set up our beacon. Place the beacon down and boom. So let's put a diamond in, give it haste two. So now that we have haste two, we can pretty much instantly mine anything. Anyway though, now I have the beacon set up, I'm basically going to mine out a giant room to pretty much give us a bunch of space for this secret area. So once we have everything mined out, we can pretty much decorate everything inside of it and it should look pretty good. But before I can even think about getting anything decorated, I have a lot of mining to do.
and my pickaxe keeps getting so close to breaking. But that's fine because I have a big brain idea. And well, the idea that I have is to just make more pickaxes. So let's make a bunch of fresh diamond pickaxes and let's pick up our enchantment table and all of these bookshelves because I'm going to temporarily move all of this into the end because that's where my enderman XP farm is and it will make enchanting all of these diamond pickaxes a whole lot easier. So here we are at the enderman farm. I'm just going to extend this area right here so we have somewhere to put the enchantment table. And let's put the grindstone there and let's get enchanting all of these pickaxes. Hold up just a second. I may have accidentally forgot to bring lapis. So I now have to go all the way back home. And that's what I'm looking for. So now I have the lapis. Let's start enchanting. And our first enchant is literally perfect. Anyway, though, let's get some more XP. And let's keep enchanting these pickaxes. So now that all of these pickaxes have efficiency 4, we can combine them together to get efficiency 5. Let's combine these two together. Perfect. And finally, let's combine these two together. And there we go. So now we have three efficiency 5 pickaxes, all of them breaking 3. And I'm pretty sure we can put mending on them as well. Because yeah, I have some spare mending books. So let's just get some more XP. And there we go. So we now have three insanely overpowered pickaxes. Also, quickly before we head back home, let's just mend up our main pickaxe. Also, let's not forget to take back our enchantment table. Now that I'm back home from the end, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade all of these pickaxes into netherite. And just like that, we now have three more netherite pickaxes. So let's get back to mining and seeing as we have all of these new pickaxes, we should be able to get this done really, really quickly. There we go. So now that I've mined out the entire area, let's actually start building the hidden base. So let's go and get all of the resources... Hey! Oh no, something's telling me that I'm building this secret base in a slime chunk, which means we're just gonna have a bunch of slimes always spawning. You know what though? I'm actually okay with that. I'm just gonna let these slimes bounce around and do whatever they want down here. So the materials I want to build this base out of is light blue and white concrete, maybe some stone bricks, and then also some acacia logs. I can't be the only person that likes acacia wood. Guys, back me up in the comments if you like it too please. Anyway though, let's gather all of the materials that I need, starting with sand and gravel for the concrete. <laughs> This should be enough materials for the build. All I need to do now is turn all of this gravel and sand into concrete. And seeing as I want light blue concrete and white concrete, I'm going to need some light blue dye and some white dye. And luckily for me, I think I have a place where I can get a ton of white dye. So even though this thing is supposed to be a creeper farm, sometimes you get mobs that spawn around the island and somehow make their way into the middle. So I'm hoping there'll be some bones down here. And perfect. Now we can turn these bones into bone meal and turn this bone meal into white dye. Ooh, we have ourselves a wandering trader. Let's check out what trades we have. And the trades are some of the worst trades that I think I have ever seen. Hey, yo, why are the llamas looking at me weird? Anyway, though, now that we have ourselves the white dye, we just need some blue dye. So let's find some lapis. Let's put the crafting table down. Let's turn some of this lapis into blue dye. Now that we have blue dye, let's just put the spare bone meal and lapis in here. Now, the thing is, I don't know exactly the amount of concrete I'm going to need. So let's just make a bunch of white concrete. Okay, we already have a ton of white concrete powder. Let's also not forget that we have to combine blue and white dye together to get light blue dye. And then we can use that to make some light blue concrete. Okay, maybe I grabbed too much gravel and sand. I don't think I'll be needing to use this much. Now, the thing is with normal concrete, though, I cannot just build out of the concrete powder because if I try to build out of this, it will just, well, yeah, it, it will just fall to the ground. So I need to head to the surface so I can turn all of the concrete powder into normal concrete. So let's load up this shulker box with a bunch of concrete and let's get to work turning all of this into normal concrete. There's definitely a better way to do this, but the way I like to do it is stack up all of the concrete powder, put some water down, and then mine every single piece. Okay, gamers, I have all of the concrete in this chest, which I think this should be enough. So now what I'm thinking is the best way that I'm going to be able to build this thing is probably by outlining where I want every room. And then once I have the outlines down, I can kind of go around and build everything. Also, yes, the slimes are still spawning down here. Now, the one thing that I'm thinking before I go ahead and build this base is do I bring my villagers down underground now or do I wait until I've built the underground base? Okay, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to build the whole entire underground base first and then bring the villagers down after. I feel like that'll be the easiest thing to do. So yes, guys, you are going to have to, um, 
wait out in the rain in until I'm done. So yeah, let's grab some concrete and let's get to building this base. So as I said earlier, the best way for me to do this is to mark out the outline of where I want each room to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with the blue concrete. So there we go. We got the first room outlined. Now this is probably going to be the smallest room of them all because it's literally just a way to get in and out the base. So it doesn't have to be anything special. So then from this room, we go into the middle room where the beacon's going to be. So this one's got to be quite big. So let's get the blue concrete out and let's start outlining this room. And yeah, this one's going to be pretty huge. Okay, so I've done the outline for this room. Now I'm just going to move the beacon into the center to make things easier. Now that we have the beacon set up, let's go ahead and finish all of these outlines. Okay, so there we go. I have marked out where I want every single room to go. And I really wanted each room to be a circle. But when it comes to the villager trading room, it kind of doesn't make sense for it to be a circle because I basically want all of the villagers to be stood next to each other. And then I can have their like workstations in front of them. So that's why this room isn't a circle. I've also made the final decision on where I want each room to go. So this room will be the brewing room. This middle room will obviously be where all the villagers go. And then this room is where I'm going to be storing all of my valuables. Now, the thing is, I'm going to be expanding this room in this direction. This is basically going to be the area that I turn into the hidden diamond vault. So now that we have marked everything out, building this thing is going to be a whole lot easier. And I believe there is only one more thing I need to collect before we go ahead and build this thing. And the thing that I need is glowstone. And then with the glowstone, I'm going to turn all of it into redstone lamps because redstone lamps is what I'm going to be using to light up this entire base. Okay, so now that we finally have everything, let's go ahead and build this thing. So I have finished the first room and this is looking pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm really glad that I chose to go with light blue concrete because this just looks so nice. So I think that is this room completely finished. The only thing that I need to add is maybe some like light blue stained glass right there so the beacon light is blue. But of course it is now time to finish all of these rooms as well. But honestly having this room done just looks so nice. Like the acacia wood, like guys I told you acacia wood can look good okay. I know a lot of you guys don't like acacia wood but guys trust me it's seriously not that bad. Okay let's just just go ahead and get back to building this thing. We are now almost done with the build. The only things I need to do is turn both of these into actual water elevators. And then over here, I need to decorate the brewing area. And then opposite the brewing room, we have the valuables area, which I still need to decorate as well. And I also need to build the secret diamond vault down there. And then finally, this is the room where all of the villagers are going to go. So you know what? Let's just quickly... And just like that, we are done. All I need to do now, though, is get the villagers down here. And the way that I'm going to do that is just build a giant minecart track all the way down into the villager room. Okay, guys, hop in the minecarts. Come on. Come on please? Yes. And perfect. Okay, yes. So I have the first villager in position. I just got to go ahead and get all of the rest of the villagers down here. The villager trading room is amazing. I have all of my best villagers down here. So whenever I want to trade, I can just go ahead and do it. So now that this room is done, I'm just going to go ahead and decorate the interior of this room and also that room. So for this room, this is where, of course, I'm going to be putting all of my valuables. So let's just go ahead and put a block for each valuable. Okay, now I just need to quickly transfer all of my valuables over. Now that I've transferred all of the valuables over, as you can see, we have the emeralds, we have the netherite, we have all of the gold. I now just need a place to sort all of my diamonds, so I'm going to build a diamond vault right here. Now, the thing is about this diamond vault, it requires a really cool redstone door. But as you guys know from earlier, I suck at redstone. I really hope a 3x3 three three redstone door isn't that bad to build, so let me just go ahead and grab all of my redstone. I think we'll just need a bunch of... S um, did you guys just see that? How did a glow squid get down here? I kind of feel bad for that glow squid. I mean, I've literally got the glow ink sacks in my inventory. Right, so I think this is everything I'll need. I've got some redstone, some observers, some redstone repeaters, some sticky pistons. So let's give this redstone door an attempt. Before I began making the redstone vault door itself, I decided to make the room first just so that I didn't get any of the redstone in the wrong position. The vault door is now done. So as you can see, we have a button right here and then we have a button right here. I really have no idea if it works. So let's give it a go. Please work. And come on. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, if we press it again, it should open up and look how cool that looks. I am just so surprised it actually works. Okay. I have a really cool idea. So if we just go ahead and close it, if we break this block and replace it with a diamond block, will it still work? And 
Yes, okay, so now, so obviously over here, you know, if you look in this chest, you're obviously going to be getting redstone because the redstone block's there, and over here, you're going to be getting emeralds because, you know, there's an emerald block right there. If you now look at the vault, we have a diamond there to show that all of our diamonds are going to be in this vault. So let's quickly add back some lighting into the vault. Now we can just go ahead and place all of our diamonds down in the middle and stack them all up. Oh my, we have a full pile of diamonds. But I also have some spare, so I'm just going to put them all in this chest, so if we actually do need to use any diamonds, we can just use the ones from here. But wow, this just looks so nice. And then we also have this really cool vault door to go with it as well, just to make it look even better. Man, I am happy with this. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this closed for now because there is another room that we need to quickly decorate. And it is the potion brewing room. So for this area, I just want to put all of the stuff that you need to brew potions. So let's put some item frames down. And then let's put all of these in their item frames. And then over here is where I'm going to put the brewing stands. So let's put some barrels down with brewing stands on top. Okay, that's looking pretty nice, but I do have some spare bookshelves. So let's go ahead ahead and put these here. And then over here, I'm going to put another cauldron because if this cauldron runs out of water, I'm going to need a spare. So let's do something like this with the cauldron on top. And finally, let's put an iron bar there. And there we go. We have ourselves our full brewing room. Now, I think it's time that we finally turn these water elevators into actual working water elevators. So to do this, I believe I just need a bunch of kelp. I think all I need to do now is just fill up each water elevator with a bunch of kelp. Okay, so that's the first one done. And that's the second one. Now, if I break this and replace this block with soul sand, it should somehow work. And then for this one, I need to put a magma block. Okay, so this one should pull me all the way to the top. And yes, it does. And then this one should pull me all the way down. And yep, it is working perfectly. We have now fully completed the hidden base. So I'm going to give you guys a full tour. So you go down the secret door. You then walk all the way down here. Take a right to go down the water elevator. Then you hop out of the water elevator and you are now in the hidden base. So once you walk out of the water elevator room, you are now in the beacon room. And I just realized something. And that's much better. So to the left of the beacon room, you have the brewing area, which is quite big. Then you come over here to the villager trading area where you have all of the best villagers. And then you come over here to my personal favorite room, storage area where I keep all of my valuables. And then of course, all the way at the back of this room, you have the diamond vault. Check this out. So there we go. There is the entire hidden base. Now this thing is so cool. I absolutely love this place. But guys, now that we have a new build, I need your help. That's right. We need a name for this place. So comment down below some cool names that you think we should name the hidden base. I'll be putting a sign right there with not only the name, but also the name of the person that suggested that name. And I also just realized, talking of naming things, in the last episode, I asked you guys for some name suggestions of what we should call our brand new pet parrot. And you guys went absolutely crazy with the name suggestions. So the name I decided to go with is Sparky. So I'll put the comment on screen right now of who suggested this name. And for some reason, I really like the name Sparky. So there we go. We have now named our pet parrot Sparky. But now it's time to do something which you guys have been suggesting down below in the comments. And that is for me to get an elytra. So before I head to the end, I'm just going to make some fireworks ready for when we actually do get the elytra. I'm going to need a way to get back home. I also only have one piece of steak. So let me grab some more food. Okay, so I've got some delicious bread and also some building blocks. So let's head over to the end portal. All right, let's hop in the end portal. Okay, there's the portal, but I need an ender pearl to get in. So let's just take this enderman out. Let's throw this in like that. And you've got to be kidding me. Wait, what? Okay, that was a complete fail. We need to get another one. Maybe like that. Okay, there we go. Wait, what is going on? Why is there water? Okay, I really have no idea what's going on. But anyway, so this is the end city that I've already looted. So we need to go and find another one. So I think the best thing for me to do is just basically run around and explore until I find one. Also, if I want the alignment, I not only have to find just like a normal end city, but it has to have a ship on it as well. Okay, this is where the blocks come in useful because I'm just going to breach from island to island. Okay, here we go. Pro gamer move. Let's not mess this up. Let's just... Uh, come on. Oh, wait. Come on. Yes. Okay. If I had messed that up, that could have gone terribly wrong. I found an end city. Oh my. I've been searching for ages. I really hope this thing has a ship. Wait, will I be able to see from here? I Wait, I don't know. I'm going to get some more blocks and head towards it, but from what it looks like, I'm not sure if this thing's going to have an end ship or not. I'm here and there is no end ship. You've got to be kidding. Me. I guess we got to keep going. Hold up a second. Is that that's an end ship? Yes. Oh my I have literally been searching for way too long, but we have finally 
found one. So let's get under the end ship and let's build directly up. All right, we're almost there. Let's build up and we got to break a piece of obsidian. Okay, perfect. Let's get in. There should be a shulker right there. Let's not get hit by this. There they are. There are the elytras. But before we get the elytra, let's check out what's in these chests. So, okay, that is the worst chest plate ever. The boots aren't that bad. We'll take that. We'll take the iron as well. We'll leave the iron sword and chest plate. In this chest, we have ourselves some... Ooh, these are actually really good boots. We'll take the iron as well. And of course, the diamond horse armor. And why not? We'll take the saddle as well. But are you guys ready? Three, two, one, and boom. There we go. We have finally got ourselves some elytras, guys. I am so happy right now because elytras just have to be one of the best items. Let's put them on. Let's see what they look like. And oh yeah, take a look at us. We definitely have to enchant these with mending and unbreaking when we get back home. But yes, we finally got some elytras. Let's also put some fireworks in our offhand. And now we can literally fly around this end city. Okay, this is the way that we get home. Let's see if we can perfectly land inside here. And there we go. All right, so now that we're back in the end, let's head home. So let's store away all of our stuff really quickly because what I'm going to do now is just make a bunch of sticks and and then trade all of them for some emeralds. And then with these emeralds, I can buy an unbreaking book and also a mending book. Now I need to quickly make another anvil because my anvil that I usually use is actually broken. So let's put this here and then take our elytras off. So now let's add unbreaking to our elytra and also mending to our elytra. So now we basically have elytras that will never break. And guys, comment down below some name suggestions of what I should call my elytras as well. Also, another thing I'm just going to quickly do is put all of my spare pickaxes in a shulker box because I just don't need them in my inventory all the time. Now guys, not only do we have ourselves this really cool hidden base, we also have ourselves an elytra. So guys, that is where I am going to go ahead and end this episode. You guys are the best. I'll see you in the next one.